Good afternoon. Today we continue with the topic on redundancy resolution of the human fingers in cooperative object translation. The organization of today's lecture will be as follows. First we have the introduction and then we have the finger kinematics of the index finger, middle finger and the thumb where we will be seeing the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematics. Then we will be seeing the major portion which is the redundancy resolution of these three digits in object translation motion. Finally, we will be seeing the results and discussion coming out with the summary. Coming to the introduction, this research study explores how human explores or resolve the redundancy in their thumb, index and middle fingers while performing object translation motion. We observe that humans actively employ a secondary subtask of utilizing manipulability measure when performing a primary subtask of tracking a given desired trajectory of the fingertip. This behavior is accurately captured by an inverse kinematic model based on a single redundancy parameter which take both negative values to and also changes in magnitude across the 12 subjects who have performed the same task of object manipulation. These findings are considered to be of significant importance towards the challenges of the design and control of hand exoskeleton, especially finger exoskeletons for cooperative object manipulation. Coming to the first part which is the finger kinematic model for the these three digits thumb, index and middle fingers. The thumb is modeled kinematically with the three degrees of freedom in order to perform the flexion extension move, movement where the degrees of freedom are considered for these joints CMC flexion extension and the MCP flexion extension and the IP. This is for CMC flexion extension 1 degrees of freedom and 1 degrees of freedom in the MCP and 1 degrees of freedom in the IP joint. Similarly, for the index and middle fingers we have considered 4 degrees of freedom that is the MCP joint has 2 degrees of freedom. One is the abduction adduction which is given by this uh, theta MCP and the other one or phi MCP and phi PIP and phi DIP for the MCP, PIP and DIP joints and that is where the 3 degrees of freedom, 4 degrees of freedom considered for the middle finger as well. Now, going to the kinematic equation, forward kinematic equation of these 3 finger tips for the thumb it is Tx and Tz where Ty is 0 because it is going in a plane. And similarly, for the index and the middle finger, we have the 3 uh, xyz coordinate of the fingertip because of the 4 degrees of freedom including the abduction adduction. And here are the kinematic equations which relates the joint angle to the fingertip position. Continuation. Now, coming to the forward kinematic equation, generalized equation for the finger is given by x k equal to f of theta k and the differential kinematics is given by x k dot equal to j k theta k dot where j k is the Jacobian matrix is given by the partial differentiation of the forward kinematic equation with respect to the joint coordinates theta k. Thus, the general solution that is the joint angular velocity of the fingertip for the differential equation which is x k dot equal to j k theta k dot is given by theta k dot equal to first term which is j k pseudo inverse x k d, d dot plus i minus j k pseudo inverse j k into the vector n where the vector n is an arbitrary vector and j k is the right pseudo inverse and the vector n can be decomposed into k p into dou m of theta by dou theta k, where m is the manipulability measure of this redundant index or middle finger or the thumb, where it is given by root of determinant of j, j transpose and k p is a positive constant. Now, coming to the schematic of the hand reference frame, the body frame and the plane of motion. The plane of motion is considered with respect to the object frame which is as per the schematic it is along the x y plane of the coordinate of the object 
and then we have put the markers on the each joint of the index finger, middle finger and the thumb as shown in the figure. We have the world coordinate frame as well. Then coming to the joint angle computation from the experimentally obtained marker points, how we compute the joint angles from the marker positions which are placed on the finger joints. There are two joints to be computed in general, one is the abduction adduction angle which is theta MCP and the other one is the phi MCP which is the flexion extension angle. The flexion extension angle as can be seen when the body is when the digit is translating from the extension posture towards its flexion posture, what is the flexion extension angle computed, how it is computed? It is computed based on the sine angle between the vector OP1 and OP2 where OP1 is the vector which connects the MCP joint to the PIP joint which is nothing but the vector representing the proximal phalanx and this OP1, OP2 represents the initial configuration of the proximal phalanx to the intermediate configuration of the proximal phalanx and hence the angle between these two joints or these two vectors gives the flexion extension angle. Similarly, for the abduction adduction angle, it is computed as the joint angle or the angle between the two vectors OQ1 and OQ2. OQ1 is the vector at the initial configuration connecting the MCP joint to the proximal interferential joint PIP joint. Now, coming to the generalized angle computation from the inverse kinematic model. It has been computed as per the flowchart given here that is we start with the desired given position of the fingertip and we differentiate that to have the x k d dot. Then we compute the generalized solution based on the manipulability involvement which is given by theta k dot equal to j k pseudo inverse x k d dot first term which is the primary subtask and the secondary subtask is given by second term which is i minus j pseudo inverse j into k p multiplied by the partial derivative of the manipulability measure with respect to the joint variable. That is we are instantaneously trying to maximize the manipulability measure. Then we integrate it to obtain the joint angle from the joint velocity. Then with the corresponding joint velocity joint angle we compute the forward kinematics to obtain the fingertip position. Then this procedure, these steps continue till we obtain the, till we reach the last position of the finger trajectory, fingertip trajectory. We start from he here A and we end at point B. Till we reach the end point B, it continues, the algorithm continues with the instantaneous maximization of the manipulability measure. Now coming to the major portion of this lecture which is the redundancy resolution. We assumed the cubic dependence of the redundancy parameter which we have seen here kp to be cubically dependent on the normalized time and hence it is given by the cubic polynomial equation kp of t equal to kp0 plus kp1 t plus kp2 t t square plus kp3 into t cube. We have the four coefficients to be computed kp1, kp0, kp1, kp2 and kp3 to obtain the cubic value of a cubic spline of the redundant parameter. The coefficients are obtained by minimizing the root mean square error between the experimentally desired joint angle and the inverse kinematically computed joint data that is given by this expression E theta j that is a root mean square generalized expression between the, the discrepancy between the desired experimental joint angle and the computed inverse kinematic angle. And we have the Yoshikawa model which is given in general we have seen in the last lecture. It is given by this generalized expression theta k dot equal to j pseudo inverse x k d dot plus i minus j pseudo inverse j into k p dou m by dou theta. Our findings suggest that humans accommodate redundancy by instantaneously altering the sign and magnitude of the parameter kp along with the utilization of the manipulability measure throughout the finger configuration in obtaining the desired trajectory. Coming to the results now, 
first we compare the joint angular trajectories of the index finger for all the 12 human subjects who performed the same object translation task where we have the row wise subject 1, subject 2, subject 3, subject 4 accordingly 12 subjects we have with all the 4 joint angle variations. MCP abduction adduction angle, MCP flexion extension angle, PIP flexion extension angle and the DIP distal interferential joint angle. Okay, these 4 joint angles are compared with the inverse kinematic angles. So, the best match is for subject 5 who has the root mean square error 2.18 degree and the worst match is for subject 3 who has the root mean square error value which is 7.37 degrees. Similarly, the comparison of the joint trajectories, joint angular trajectories for the middle finger for the 12 subjects is given here in this figure and the best match is, up to, is observed for the subject 12 who has the root mean square error to be 2.46 degrees and the worst match is for subject 1 who has the root mean square error value coming out to be 7.14 degrees. Finally, for the thumb the joint angle uh, trajectories are compared between the inverse kinematic angle and the experimental data. The best match is obtained for subject 11 who has the root mean square error 2.72 degrees and the worst match is for subject 3 who has the highest value of 18.85 degree root mean square error. Now coming to the comparison of the optimal trajectory of KP of T obtained for the kinema kinematic model of the index finger first. Okay. In general this profiles of these KP trajectories have a single hill and a single valley in general. So, out of these 12 cases for the 12 subjects for the index finger 8 are with both hills and valleys present and 2 cases have a single valley and in one case each there is a hill and an inflection point. Now, coming to the same optimal trajectory profile of the KP of T the redundancy parameter for the middle finger for the 12 subjects we have observed that 4 cases are with hills and valleys and 5 cases are with only hills only valleys uh, 2 with an inflection point and 1 with a single hill. Finally, the optimal trajectories trajectory profiles for the KP of T is obtained for the in kinematic model of the thumb where we observe that from these profiles we observe that 6 profiles are with hills and valleys, 5 with only valleys and 1 with a single hill. Now, the inference from these optimal trajectories of the redundancy parameter is that for a digit no two profiles are close to identical. Even when the shapes are identical they differ in magnitude significantly except in one in only 4 of the 36 cases. Why 36 cases? 12 for each finger, 12 subjects performing with the 3 fingers and hence 36 cases. Among this only 11.11 percentage attains the KP values okay, positive where remaining all other all having the negative values of the KP. Now, coming to the variation of root mean square error in joint angles for all the 3 digits, we compare the root mean square of all the 3 digits in the joint angles when considering redundancy and with no redundancy. That means, when no redundancy we put the value of KP to be 0 and hence we observe that optimized KP minimizes the root mean square error significantly compared to the value with KP equal to 0 that is clearly observed in the columns 1 and 2 of table and similarly for middle finger KP is optimized and KP 0 we can see that they are significantly greater compared to the optimized values and for the thumb also we observe that they are significantly higher values. So, the max maximum discrepancy is obtained for the index finger subject 6 is having 10.22 degrees and for the middle finger subject 10 is having 10 degrees and for the thumb subject 10 is again having 66.36 degrees. Now, coming to the variation of the manipulability measure for the index finger among the 12 subjects. The general trend is that individual manipulability measure generally increases. The manipulability measure increases for subjects 3, 9 and 11 significantly and the manipulability measure increases then decreases 
uh, or for subjects 4 and 6, marginal increase in manipulative measure is observed in subjects 5 and 10 and subject 12 remains almost unaltered in manipulability measure. And now the variation of the manipulability measure for the middle finger is shown here where the general trend is obviously the manipulative measure increases as in the case of the index finger. So, the manipulative measure only increases or for subjects 7 and 8 and the manipulative measure increases then decreases for subjects 2, 4, 6 and 11 and then marginal increase in manipulative measure is for subjects 1 and 5. Then finally, the manipulability measure variation for the thumb, the general trend is increase in the manipulative measure. Subjects 4, 10 and 12 have only the increase in manipulative measure and marginal increase in manipulative measure are for subjects 1, 3, 7, 8 and 9. Out of 36 cases coming to the inference, out of 36 cases, 33 cases that is 91 percentage have increase in the manipulative measure. Now coming to the repeatability and global optimization of a KP of T. To determine the uniqueness of KP of T, optimization was performed again for 3 cases, 1 for each digit that is 1 for each finger, cubic dependence of the KP of T, then total number of evaluations that is 1 lakh evaluations and the filtered experimental data and the computational effort with the 1 lakh RMSE evaluations are retained same for this repeatability analysis and each column here in the table shows that we are we have done 2 times for each digit that is for index finger column 1, middle finger column 2 and column 3 shows the profile of KP for thumb and we can observe that we have the same profile obtained in the repeatability case which tested first time again and the second time also we have performed with the same evaluations with the same conditions retained, we have observed uh, almost the same profile where the root mean square error value remains almost closely same that is 2.18 and 2.38. Similarly, for the middle finger it is obtained with the root mean square error discrepancy being 0 0.01 degrees and for the thumb it is 0 0.03 degree discrepancy in these two repeatability cases. Now, there are two possibilities exist when translating a small object that is which is similar to the parallelogram solutions offered by a 2 degrees of freedom planar manipulator that is given a point we have this type of solution. Okay. So, hence some humans may subconsciously prefer one way of translating an object over the other because when we translate it there could be different ways. One way is translating with this joint that is DIP joint coming into picture with GIP joint coming into picture being the straight line and the DIP joint having flexed. So, these are the two cases which is identical to the parallelogram solution of the 2 degrees of freedom manipulator. So, further investigation is needed to determine the preferred most preferred posture by using these subjects. We can see the object getting translated with the first way and this is the second way where the object is translated without bending the DIP joint that is the last joint where you can see that it is bent with all the joints coming to be flexed whereas this joint is not flexed while translating the object. So, these are the two ways humans can translate an object with their three fingers. Now, coming to the free finger motion, we want to test whether this observation or the inference is same is true only for the task oriented motion or free motion. So, we have tested our algorithm for free motion as well as shown in the figure as shown in this video. We flex the finger with this free motion without expecting any task to be performed. So, for this we have performed this analysis again for this index finger and we have plotted the profile 
which is almost closely matching with the experimental data with the root mean square error of 21.70 degrees and the KP also shows that it varies with the sign and magnitude throughout the finger configuration in obtaining the desired trajectory. And finally, the manipulative measure shows that it varies and it takes the value changing with the finger configuration as we can see that there is a peak in the configuration pertaining to posture A and for posture B it is having the valley here and we have in posture C we have again hill. So, the maxima and minima of the manipulability depends on the instantaneous finger configuration as it is conforming the results or the observation from Yoshikawa. Here as well the humans vary redundancy parameter both in sign and magnitude that is the final observation. And now coming to the assumptions and limitations we have performed we have considered only kinematics in this study and the task motion was performed in 2 seconds generally humans perform these type of activities of daily living very fast less than 2 seconds. So, we have considered in our kinematic model the tip pinch grasp such that only point contact is considered though in reality finger pads also coming into picture. And we have considered for the modeling of the finger joints in the kinematic model we have considered the orthogonal joint axis and the uh, intersecting joint axis. But in reality by the biological modeling of the system we do not have the orthogonal joint axis especially we have considered only the 3 degrees of freedom of the thumb, but it is basically it has 5 degrees of freedom. And the finding and observations are based on a 3D motion capture system experimental data and that data will be depending on the positioning or placement of the markers on the finger joints and also the data filtering errors. So, to determine the KP of t that is the redundancy parameter variation with time accurately choosing its approximate approximate polynomial must also be necessary that is it we have considered the cubic polynomial maybe it will be quintic also. So, that observation that exploration must also be done. Now, coming to the summary the study we have studied the motion data of 12 subjects human subjects performing the object translation task by flexing their fingers towards their palm. Using the Yoshikawa's model that is given in 1990, we confirm that the humans actively employ the manipulability based redundancy as a secondary subtask while performing this primary subtask of tracking the given desired finger trajectory. However, we observe that the redundancy parameter varies in both sign and magnitude in order to map with the joint coordinates of the human. We observe that this adjusting term can also have the variation towards the finger configuration towards it in a, to complete the full trajectory. And this work we believe that it aims to provide a partial but crucial knowledge base in finger motion that would assist in the design and development of finger exoskeleton for cooperative motion translations in the future in the near future. So, we come to the conclusion that is a summary of this study experimental study. We study the motion data of 12 subjects who perform the cooperative translation of a fine objects by flexing their digits towards their palm. Using Yoshikawa's model we confirm that the humans employ the manipulability based redundancy as a secondary subtask in performing the primary subtask of tracking the desired trajectory for the fingertip. However, we from our <coughs> inverse kinematic model we accurately capture the human joint trajectories given the tip path and the initial configuration the redundancy parameter needs to vary in their sign and magnitude with the intermediate configurations. We observe that by adjusting this term exhibits varying be behavior across the 12 subjects because these 12 subjects do not have the same profile even though if they have the same profile that KP profile varies in magnitude as well. And there exists lesser commonality between the subjects of the redundancy parameters and this work aims at providing a partial but crucial knowledge base for 
the challenges towards the design and control of finger exoskeletons for performing cooperative motions. Thank you.